The chapter begins with the Empress and Second Prince entering the ballroom, accompanied by giggling and talking nobles. They power walk confidently down the red carpet. Symbolizing they are royals, the golden hair shines under the bright light of the ballroom. The emperor rarely appeared in their game. So the crown prince sat on it instead. The protagonist is wondering why the second prince is sitting on it this time. The party began after the second prince's speech. But a loud noise from the entrance interrupted the proceedings, leading the nobles to chatter. The man with golden blonde hair steps inside the hall. Dragging someone behind him, the crown prince, with a red cape, is truly shining to the eyes. People near the crown prince screamed. But he dragged a person with no movements in, wishing the second prince a happy birthday. The crown prince sat down and pulled the dragged body by the hair, resembling a murderer. The crown prince stabbed the murderer with his sword, causing blood to spill out. He offered this gift to the second prince. But the second prince's pale face and inability to speak made the situation worse. The protagonist panics while servants clean up blood and corpses. A white box appears, asking if she wants to go to the maze garden. The crown prince appears crazier than imagined, making her doubt. Penelope, fearing death, since she came to die, hoping to endure it once. At least she had an insurance call address at, which allows her to reset if she die. And sure of the end of the maze, she hesitantly approached a water fountain, but felt something cold and heavy by her neck. The crown prince approached, circling Penelope, slightly slicing her neck. The crown prince was surprised it was Eckhart's crazy fuss maker dog. The crown prince's emotionless expression and deathly or sting the protagonist, who realizes she is about to be killed. She searched for the reset button, but it is nowhere no be found searching for the reset button before dying. Hoping to know where it is before dying, he asked if what last words she wants to deliver to her brothers. The crown prince appeared to be planning to kill her, raising his sword. Very panicked she stopped him and will answer his question. The sword was now firmly fixed to her neck again. The crown prince eagerly anticipates her response. But she must provide a reasonable excuse. The protagonist feeling a mix of fear and pain utters a stupid statement about saying she likes the crown prince. His crimson eyes widen because of the statement said by Penelope. She repeat the sentence saying she had loved him the entire time. The crown prince mutter sparked an unexpected explanation about a duke family's crazy dog in love with the royal family's wretch. He asked her again what did she like from him. The protagonist answered it was his good looks that she likes. The crown prince's smirk grew larger. As she tried to hold back her tears, as she neared fainting, he let her free, removing the blade of a sword that was causing pain. The crown prince asked her to explain why she fell in love with him the next time they meet. The protagonist is shocked by the interest gauge, which shows the percent, which is ridiculous. As she look at the top of his head, the crown prince asks about the purpose of standing there. She quickly walk fast to the maze entrance without looking back. Cold air stings to her cut neck. She is too distracted to feel pain, feared about the lack of reset button which is her insurance. She contemplates the possibility of death as the end. Questioning if she will return to her origins, the only choice left is to end with a character. While thinking about surviving, tears started to fall on her face until she bumped into someone. She was grabbed by someone. She screamed and refused to die. The person then reveals his surprise eyes and silver hair, revealing her fear and a desire to escape. Dinder Verdani, one of the male interest. She calmed down after knowing it was in the crown prince. He offer a handkerchief to her to cover her bleeding neck. Penelope expresses her gratitude and promises to return the favor. He rejects, expressing a desire for sadness to leave in her eyes. Her attention is focused on the letters above his head. After encountering Vinter, she then went to the ball and experienced a sudden blackout, fainting at the ball, and seeing Derek with a pale face, after she faint caused by overwhelming stress. After entering the game, she dream about her past. After four days, the protagonist wakes up to find Emily Terry and relieved. She shares her worry with the Duke and young masters. But the protagonist did not believe her words. Emily reveals that her oldest brother, and the Duke ordered talented doctors to the capital. 
while the butler barely stopped the second young master. From leaving to the royal palace, this unexpected care for Penelope was surprising. The butler delivered the message to Penelope that she was called by the duke. Lady Penelope arrives at the room, greeted by the butler. The duke speaks from inside, and the lady feels awkward entering. The duke sits on a sofa, and the lady greets him, bowing her head. The duke spoke halfway. Then Penelope suddenly speak to ask forgiveness. Kneeling down, she apologizes for causing trouble in a royal ceremony and causing shame to the family. She will gladly accept any punishments without opposing. But the duke stopped her. The duke instructs Penelope to rise from the ground, advising her not to kneel down on her legs because she's an Eckhart. He warns that no one can make her kneel to the ground. Even royals, Penelope agrees, and the duke's charisma is impressive. Despite not being visible during the game, the duke explained that he called her not to scold. He wanted to know about a royal palace incident and the relationship between Penelope and the crown prince. She recall a previous incident where she nearly fell from a sword. She lied about the crown prince being in a bad mood. That result in the incident. He was very angry questioning the crown prince. Doing the pointing of his sword at a noble girl just because he is in bad mood. The duke continued to speak explaining that Eckhart's are neutral. And are not on anyone's side. As the first empress has passed away and support for the crown prince has decreased. The current empress is the second wife of the emperor and the next emperor is unknown at the moment. This situation makes their family to choose which to side. The duke, satisfied with Penelope's behavior, offered her a reward instead of punishment. Penelope was surprised by the options, but decided to choose her reward later. Emily welcomed her back to her room and sat on the chair to think about my her. Emily handed her with a white handkerchief, which she had kept for a while. Penelope forgot about it. But she appreciated Emily's thoughtful gesture. The handkerchief, once soaked in blood, has turned white and the protagonist needs to return the courtesy. She need to meet Vinter since he is one of the male target. The game's sequence of episodes for meeting capture targets is unlocked in order. The protagonist meets Vinter immediately after meeting the crown prince, but the story remains unchanged. The last capture target, Eclis, appears after meeting Vinter. Leaving the story which will happen on the day the festival, she plans on meeting Eclise first before the Duke, so that she can finish the game immediately and go back to her world. Penelope focuses on raising interest for a manageable capture target, revealing that she have chosen Eclise as the one.